Section 15.4 Hill Cipher Computer Versions Hill Cipher was too complex for cipher clerks to do by hand. Hill also created a mechanical device for performing the encryption and decryption. This was done to satisfy the patent laws of the time, which allowed patenting a machine but not a mathematical algorithm. Still, the cipher saw very little use in practice. Today, in the computer age, the Hill cipher has become practical again. Matrix multiplication is child's play for a computer. Instead of 3 by 3 matrices, it is easy to use 10 by 10 matrices. Instead of 9 characters of known plain text, Emily needs 100 characters for a known plain text attack. That is pretty much impossible, other than by espionage, or capturing a message on the battlefield. The Hill cipher, using a secret 10 by 10 matrix, using the standard alphabet, is rated 6. The Hill cipher using a secret 10 by 10 matrix with key mixed substitutions both before and after the matrix multiplication is rated 8. You can further strengthen the Hill cipher by having several matrices and choosing the matrix for each block either periodically or randomly. The matrices and plain text blocks may vary in size. Since matrix multiplication is not commutative, you almost always get a different result when you multiply by a matrix on the left or on the right. Each plain text block must be taken as a column vector when you multiply on the left, but a row vector when you multiply on the right. This suggests that you can get a more secure cipher by alternating sides, either periodically or randomly. Variable matrices, variable block sizes, and variable sides. You can take your pick or mix them up. You can also combine transposition with the Hill cipher, however not every transposition will improve the security. Suppose that you are using the Hill 0 or Hill 1 variant, and after the matrix multiplication you transpose the letters in each block. This is the same as using the Hill cipher with a different matrix multiplier. Let T represent the transposition. Applying T after a Hill 1 encipherment gives you C equals T brackets AP plus B equals brackets TA P plus brackets TB. All that you have accomplished is to use the matrix TA in place of A and TB in place of B. Emily can solve the cipher using known plain text, and she will never know that there was a transposition. If you wish to use transposition with Hill 0 or Hill 1, you must swap letters among different blocks, or you must swap different letters in different blocks. Surprisingly, the situation is exactly the same when you use Hill 2 or Hill 3. This is because simple substitution and transposition commute. If S is any simple substitution, T is any transposition, and M is any message, then S brackets T brackets M equals T brackets S brackets M, and hence ST equals TS. Therefore, regardless of which Hill cipher variant you use, if you are going to add a transposition step, you must swap letters among different blocks, or you must swap different letters in different blocks, either periodically or pseudo-randomly. Another idea is to multiply the message by matrices on both sides. As mentioned earlier, a block of text must be treated as a column vector when you multiply it on the left by a matrix, but as a row vector when you multiply it on the right. Suppose that you are using 3 by 3 matrices with the additive matrix B equals 0. With single-sided matrix multiplication, the expression for each ciphertext character has three terms, each involving one plaintext letter and one matrix element. With two-sided matrix multiplication, the expression for each ciphertext letter has nine terms, each involving one plaintext letter and the product of two matrix elements. So the coefficients of the plaintext letters are quadratic. Of the 81 possible quadratic coefficients, 27 appear in these expressions. For the Hill 0 and Hill 1 cases, Emily can still use known plain text to solve these equations. There is an easy way and a hard way. 
The hard way is to use 18 characters of known plain text to solve the 18 quadratic equations for the 18 unknown elements in the two 3x3 three three matrices. Good luck with that! The easy way is to treat each of the 27 quadratic coefficients as a separate variable. This changes the equations from quadratic in 18 variables to linear in 27 variables. Ignore how the 27 variables are formed from the 18 matrix elements, just treat them as indivisible units. Since there are now 27 unknowns, Emily will need 27 known letters rather than 18. Unlikely but possible, especially if she has intercepted multiple messages that she knows used the same key. For example, suppose Emily knows that every message sent from Sweden ends with the word Stockholm. Since the occurrences of Stockholm likely begin in different positions in the three-letter blocks, three different messages can give her 27 known letter placements. She can easily solve the 27 linear equations to get the 27 coefficients. From there, it is easy to solve the 27 single-term quadratic equations to find the 18 matrix elements. But why bother? The relationships between the plain text letters and the ciphertext letters are all in terms of the 27 quadratic coefficients. There is no benefit for Emily to know how those coefficients were produced. The case for Hill 1 is essentially the same as Hill 0. There are 36 unknowns, so Emily will need 36 characters of known plain text. Otherwise, the solution process is the same. There is no comparable process for Hill 2 and Hill 3. These are best solved as trigram substitution ciphers. You can get even greater strength from two-sided matrix multiplication by using different sized matrices on each side and by aligning the matrices differently on each side. Here are two examples of these techniques. In the first example, the left side multiplications are by 3x3 three by three matrices, while the three right side multiplications are by 4x4 four by four matrices. Since the 3x3 three by three matrices butt heads with the 4x4 four by four matrices as shown, let's call this the butt head configuration. This gives you an effective block size of 12 characters. Since each right side 4x4 four four matrix spans two left side 3x3 three three matrices, each ciphertext character depends on six plaintext characters rather than four. With this configuration, producing each ciphertext character takes only seven multiplications, so this method is very fast. When the mixed alphabets are secret but the matrices are known, the butthead cipher is rated six. If the mixed alphabets and the matrices are both secret, it is rated 8. The rating increases to 10 if the matrices are 6x6 six six and 7x7 seven seven or larger. Of course, whatever matrix size Sandra uses should be mutually prime. The brick wall is another recommended configuration for two-sided matrix multiplication. Here, the matrices are all of the same size, but they are offset by half their width, just like the bricks in a wall. This diagram illustrates the method. Notice that the boundaries of the matrices never line up. This configuration has no block structure, or equivalently, you could say that the entire message is a single block. Since each of the 4x4 four four right side matrices span two left side 4x4 four four matrices, each ciphertext letter depends on eight plaintext letters. This is sufficient for high security work. If you actually used two by two matrices for the first and last blocks, that would leave those blocks weak and vulnerable. It also requires you to have one by one and three by three matrices to handle uneven message lengths. It is better to use four by four matrices throughout. The next two diagrams show how this can be done for a message of length 13. The first diagram shows the placement of the left side matrices, with the last 4x4 four four matrix flush with the right end of the message. The next diagram shows the placement of the right side matrices offset by two characters. The first and last 4x4 four four right side matrices are flush with the ends of the message.
This method of positioning the last matrix makes the last left side matrix and the last right side matrix align. This can be avoided by wrapping around to the start of the message, like this. When you have a key mixed simple substitution before the left side matrix multiplication, with another after the right side matrix multiplication, and you use secret matrices of size 6 by 6 or larger, the brick wall cipher is rated 10. Since it takes some effort to invert the matrices, it may be preferable to use fixed matrices for both left and right side multiplication. Using fixed matrices weakens the cipher, but you can compensate by adding a third simple substitution between the two matrix multiplication steps. The matrices may be of any even size, 6 by 6 or larger. By comparison to the Hill cipher, let's call this the Everest cipher. The Everest cipher is rated 10.